Bill? So, Dan, I'm going to take you through a number of maps right now, just try to give you a sense of the lay of the land, then we'll bring in General Kellogg to tell us what, what Putin does next, because it's really a guessing game. We showed you these maps a few moments ago. Everything you see in the white circle is what the Russian military had established prior to, let's say, mid-December, right? So Belarus is here. Uh, here's Western Russia. You can see the dots that uh, surround Ukraine. This is Crimea down here that was taken in 2014. Now I'm going to show you everything in red, which is the new military presence on behalf half of the Russian army, okay? So you see everything in red. This is end of December. You see the buildup. You see how they're now the end of January in the Belarus. I'll show you that again in a moment here. And now you're at what, uh, sorry, let me click that forward. Yeah, uh, end of February. You see they continue to populate throughout the map. And just within the last, come on, come on, come on. Just, that's not it. So just within the last week, you start to see Belarus, which is friendly with Moscow. You see Western Russia around Ukraine. And you see Crimea here to the south. Now, this area here is really the major focus, and I'm going to explain that to you on a larger map here. Belarus has uh, had friendly relations with Putin. Uh, you could, theoretically, and the general will tell us in a moment, you could, if Putin wanted to take the entire country, he could come in from Belarus with his permission. He could come in from the southeast, which he has already done. Uh, he has the potential to come in from here as well, and Crimea, which he now controls also uh, from the south. So they talk about invasion point from three points. Uh, this would give you four different angles of coming to the country, and the, uh, the general will tell us about that in a second here. Just go back one note here, because I, I really think this is, and Dana, as we talk about this, this is really where the rubber meets the road, okay? These are these two separatist regions. And in yellow is where the Ukrainian army has been fighting this war for eight years, and you have 14,000 killed going back to 2014. Across the border here is where the Russian separatists have occupied, and this is the area now where Putin is moving into. I'll just change color here. Uh, this red line here is, uh, at the moment, this is the focus point. What does Putin do? Does he cross it and go into these areas and take on the Ukrainian army? And if he does, that's where the war is fought immediately. But if you go back to the larger map and he decides to go from three or four different angles, uh, we have a much broader issue on our hands for Ukraine. So General Kellogg, um, with that as a setup, what do you think Putin's play is now? Hey, Bill, thanks for having me. Yeah, you did a great job on giving the analysis of that. You, you actually create multiple problems for Ukraine to defend against, coming from multiple approaches. But look, the other one are the indicators, and I've seen more indicators than I have fingers and toes. And you mentioned a couple of them, and they're critical because you have to base military decision making on the indicators that you see. The field hospital is a great example. You don't move field hospitals up unless you're expecting a major engagement. Whole blood, whole blood only has shelf life for 42 days. There's open source intelligence seen uh, the airborne forces, the VDV, which he will use in an initial assault, already rigged for parachute drop. You don't put parachutes on vehicles unless you're ready to go. You look at the echelon of headquarters. What he has done, he's backed up headquarters to headquarters, army to army. That means he's got a breakthrough force in his first army headquarters, and then you've got a, a force that will continue the fight through. Uh, the exploitation force in the second headquarters. And the, all of these indicators, if you're a military planner or you're an advisor, you have to take these under consideration. You cannot discard any of them. And when you add up all these together, you look at a major offensive across multiple fronts, exactly what I would do. You create more problems than, the, uh, than Ukraine can solve, and you go for a massive and immediate strike. General, I wanted to ask you about, just to look backwards just a little bit, because when Crimea was taken, this was something that was considered quite bold by Putin, and the pushback might not have been what it needed to be. Here's Jim Clapper reflecting on that now. So I wish we, as an administration, had been more aggressive in 2014. What's the difference is, in eight years, Putin clearly is a lot more emboldened than he was eight years ago, and we have a lot better intelligence. Do you think that Putin is different? We've heard, like, even Macron, the French president, when he was with him, he said something felt or seemed different. And then you look at Crimea, they took that, yeah. and then what Bill's talking about with that red line, I mean, maybe they take it for this year, but then do they come back? But what I hear you saying is that they are positioned with different types of military equipment now than they even had in 2014? 
Uh, Dana, absolutely right. I mean, he's ready for a massive strike. Look, he's got 70 percent of his army around Ukraine right now. You know, I was fortunate to be with President Trump when he talked to Putin on at least 18 occasions, and you see a different type of Putin. And I think that's a leadership level. Right now, he had respect for for uh, President Trump. Trump acknowledged him as a leader. Right now, you've got two leaders in President Biden and, and, and Putin. They don't like each other. Putin has no respect for Biden. Biden has said very publicly he doesn't like uh, Putin, said the man has no soul. Well, you've been in the White House, Dana. You know, a lot of these are based on personal relationships. Mm -hmm. And if the personal relationship has broken down, then you're really heading for some real problems and issues. So you always would go in, and you know this from being inside the Oval Office, you'd go in and you'd caution the leaders, be very careful about what you say, be very, you know, circumspect if you need to be, at least have some strategic ambiguity out there. But right now, you know, I hate to say it, but... You know, President Biden's not dealing with corn pop. He's dealing with a very authoritarian leader who's actually ruthless. And it, it, I just see his whole tone change, uh, especially in that speech he gave uh, to his National Security Council. And so I think it's a very dangerous period. I think mm -hmm. we're doing something smart by reinforcing our forces because you're making sure you understand if you do go against NATO, it's going to be a fight and it's suicide. To, to me, and it's, it, for Russia, that's an extinction level event if you're going against NATO because we'll finish them off. General, uh, we are not to assume that even if uh, Putin were to try and overtake the entire country, it's not easy. It's the size of Texas. Yeah. Um, taking yeah. on the Ukrainian army positions in the southeast that we showed on the map a minute ago uh, might be an easier task for the next six months to a year, but even then, by, by no means is it certain that the Russians would get away without heavy casualties and tolls along the way. Uh, what are the challenges for him as he views that possibility yeah. now? Well, well, you know, you know, Bill, I've already said I always thought if he did anything, he was going to take the, uh, the eastern one-third of the country, which is predominantly Russian-speaking. And you look at the Dnieper River, that's a real demarcation line out there. But look, here's the way the Russians fight. They come in with overwhelming force. They don't care about using heavy artillery or missiles mm -hmm. or fighters and fighter bombers and massive force. It will be a massive strike. It'll be overwhelming when they do it. This isn't one of those surgical strikes. They come at you with everything they've got. And l this is one of the indicators. He's got, again, I made that comment earlier, he's got over 70 percent of his army aligned mm -hmm. around Ukraine right now. He brought in fighter wow. bombers from uh, as far away as Siberia. He's brought all his missile systems into place. You mentioned the field hospitals. He's gearing for a fight. And you have to go off indicators. A prudent planner will do that. And that's what I think we're doing right now. General, thank you. Do not go far. We will call on your expertise again very yes. soon. Thank you for Stay that. Stay close for sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.